Hey, what's going on, Wealth Giants? Ryan here. Today, we're going to be talking about questions I received in a video I posted a while back about FIFO versus LIFO and pretty much how to save money in taxes when that time of year comes around. And who doesn't want to save money in taxes? Now, just remember, I am just a YouTuber. I am not a financial advisor. So whatever I say here is for entertainment purposes only. But first, before we begin, I want to say thank you to those of you who are posting comments down below, asking me questions, allowing me to communicate with you guys. It helps me out a lot. It helps me find content to post in the future that's more targeted towards what you guys want. So thank you so much for doing that. Thank you for helping me help you. So there are three questions in this video about FIFO or LIFO and how to save money in taxes that I want to go over and they are as followed. First one is when you are selling shares on your platform, what is the presettings to selling on your platform? Is it selling FIFO? Is it selling LIFO? Or is it selling whichever willy nilly share it feels like? The second question is, is whenever I sell shares, do I change the settings every single time? And under what circumstances would I change those settings? And the third one, is there a purchase detail page to know what I've bought when I bought it and for how long I've owned it? That way I know when I should implement FIFO, LIFO or sell the highest price or lowest price. I mean, there's those options as well. And at the end of this video, I'm going to share with you an example of me using the FIFO or LIFO method to help you understand and actually see somebody going through the selling process of shares. So with that, let's get into this. So the answer to the first question of whether or not a brokerage account has a presetting of what shares it would sell first is yes, they do have a presetting. They are set to FIFO. So the first shares you buy are going to be the first shares you sell. And this is just like any other industry. If you buy a product, it's the first product that you want off the shelf. So it's automatically thinking, hmm, if you bought this one first, you might want to sell it first. So FIFO is what they are all set to as a presetting. So with question number two, there are actually three parts, but the question is, do I change the way in which I sell shares every single time? And the answer is no. There are two conditions in which I don't even bother because it doesn't make a difference. The first condition is when I decide to sell out of the entire position. Okay, if I sell out of the entire position, I'm going to be taxed on the net growth of the entire position. So it doesn't matter whether or not I sell the first couple of shares or the last couple of shares or anything like that. It's going to be taxed the same. The second condition is say I buy all of the shares at the exact same time at the exact same price. Well, at that point, if I sell the first couple of shares or the last couple of shares or the middle shares, it's going to be the exact same amount that I gain. So I will be taxed the same regardless of which shares I sell. But the third condition is a little different. This is when I would want to pay attention. And that is when I buy shares at different times, at different prices. If shares I've held on to for longer than a year, meaning they are long term positions or less than a year, short term positions, because this will make a difference in how much you are taxed. Now, I will go over this a little bit more in detail when I go into my example. But first, I want to answer question number three, which is do brokerage firms offer a purchase history detail page, meaning do they offer a page in which you can look up which shares you bought at what time, what date, uh, at what price, whether or not they are long term or short term? And the answer to that question is yes, they do, or at least they should. If they don't, you should probably consider moving on to a better brokerage firm. Now, the way you would find out is you go to the help link in their website and you ask them, hey, do you have the cost basis forms? That way I can figure out which shares I want to sell. And if they don't have it, that's a bad sign. And you should probably go to a one that is more equipped and capable and has better tools that you can use to invest and guard your wealth. Now, that's just my opinion. I'm not a financial advisor, as I said, but personal opinion, I would. Um, but I'm going to show you what those forms look like, as well as give you an example at which I would go about selling shares. And I'm going to go ahead and go into that example in three, two, one, now. Okay, so welcome to my brokerage account. Now, everybody might have a different brokerage account than me, but that's okay. The The main thing that you're looking for is how to do things. And as long as you can figure that out in your brokerage account, that is perfectly great. On top of that, everything should kind of be under the same category. So first, I want to take you through and help you find the purchase history of your shares. That way, you know which shares to sell. And so first, in my brokerage account, the TD Ameritrade platform, you're going to go my account first. And and then there's a tab called cost basis. Now this is your transaction history. This is where you should go and it should be universal 
across all platforms. If it isn't, go to the help link and ask a representative where you could find that information. And it should be fairly easy for them to explain it to you. And it doesn't cost anything at all. Now I'm going to click on the cost basis and that takes me to here. And the first thing I'm under is realized gains and losses. So right now for my realized gains and losses, this is the things that I've sold this year. And as an example, I have Uber down here and this was my most recent sale. All right. I did this like a week or two ago and I didn't sell out of all of my shares. So this is kind of a good example for you. I'll do another example that I haven't actually made the sale in that will be a little bit more in depth and more detailed that you may be able to see what I am talking about. This one, if you break down the Uber shares, I had four different positions that I sold out of. All right. And the cool thing about this is I've held on to them for less than a year. So it's a short term position, meaning I've held on to them for less than a year. Now, if you look at the position that had the highest gains, it was 34.16%. Now that's 34.16% gains that I have to pay taxes on. But let's go ahead and look at the unrealized gains and losses from the shares that I did not sell. And that is 40.22% as a short term position. Now, if I would have sold this one before the other ones, that means I would have had to pay more taxes on this position than I would on the other positions that I sold out of. And that's kind of the method behind all this is I don't want to realize the gains immediately. I want to wait until it's the last possible moment to realize any sort of gains. That way I can make the most money with paying the least amount of taxes, you know? Um, you know, eventually you'll have to pay taxes, but if you're only selling out of a portion of your position, you might as well sell out of the portion of the position that you pay the least in taxes first. So let's go ahead and look at a position that I have not sold out of, but is an ex excellent example. Now, first thing you're going to look at is Tesla. And I have bought into Tesla at four different times, four different prices. And three of these positions are long-term positions. Why one of them is a short-term position, meaning the long-term I've held on to them for more than a year. The short-term I've held on for less than a year. Now, long-term versus short-term, if I've held on to them longer than a year, it's taxed differently. And I I pay less in taxes, whereas the short term position is a taxed according to my tax bracket, meaning I have to pay it as if it were income for the year, which I don't want to do. So I would want to sell these ones last. If you notice, the first share I bought and the last share I bought are not the highest cost position. OK, that was actually the second purchase into Tesla that I had made at three hundred and sixty two dollars and ninety five cents for that one share. So that means that this would be the share I want to sell first. And these four shares are the shares that I would want to sell last due to it being the short term position. If I want to sell, I can pull up the sales tab. If you're in TD Ameritrade, you could just click that tab. And to change the tax law ID method, I would just come to this right here and I would select that. And the first thing that pops up is first in, first out FIFO. All right. Now let's go ahead and go through each of these methods and figure out which shares it would sell and which order I would want to use these methods to sell out of these shares. If I use the FIFO, this is the first share I would sell. This is the second share I'd sell. These are the third shares that I would sell. And these four are the last shares I would sell under the FIFO method. If you remember, I would want to sell out of this share first because of its price being the highest and these four shares last due to it being a short term position. Based on this, we already know that this isn't how I'd want to do it because I would sell the other share first. And if I'm only looking to sell one share, then that's not the share that I would want to sell. So let's try the life method, which means that these four shares would be sold first. These two shares would be sold second. This share would be sold third and this share would be sold last. Now, again, this wouldn't work because I would want to sell this share first due to its price and these shares last due to the short term position. So LIFO is not the one I would want to use. So let's go ahead and switch to another one that I haven't actually talked about in the video, which is highest cost. So this means that I would sell this share first, this share second, these shares third and these two shares last. Now this works perfectly because it is selling the share that I want to sell first first due to its price. And this is probably the downside to it. Say I want to sell more than two shares. I don't want to cut into my short term position because that means I'm going to pay taxes more than if I were to sell the one that I would have sold last. So in this case, if I wanted to sell more than two positions, I would first go ahead and do the high cost for the first two shares. I would sell these two shares with the highest 
highest cost first. And then I would make another transaction for the last two shares under FIFO, which is the first in first out. That way I would sell these ones before I would sell those last four. Now I know that this could be a little confusing with all the red and the arrows pointing everywhere, but if you're not 100% sure what I just said here, go back and watch it again. But if you did understand it, then perfect. But if you want to just pause the video right now, just to kind of analyze what I was talking about, which two shares I would sell first and which two shares I would sell last. Okay. The main purpose though is to sell the highest cost ones first, avoiding the short-term positions if you have long-term positions. That way you don't pay the most in taxes for your gains. So let's just quickly look at lowest cost just to kind of go over it. So first two shares that you would sell would be these two. Four shares after that would be these ones. This would be your third share to sell and this would be your last share to sell. Now under this circumstance, this isn't the way you would want to go about selling your shares. So you wouldn't do the lowest cost, but sometimes you do the reverse order of purchases. So sometimes you buy your highest cost first or your lowest cost first first and so you just need to kind of analyze which shares do I want to sell first and which shares do I want to sell last and then you would pick and choose accordingly. That way you can make the best tax savvy sale of your shares and it is a really good calculator so go ahead and check that out. And that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions please consider leaving a comment down below. Without your comments this video wouldn't have been possible. Also if you found value in this video please consider smashing that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Helps people like yourself find my videos here on YouTube. Also, if you want to see more videos like this, please consider hitting the subscribe button over to my right. It's an ugly mug, looks just like this one, and I will see you guys in the next video.